for all the South Africans living abroad, the 2024 elections is indeed an interesting time. In this video, I want to give you guys some numbers and statistics of how many South Africans living abroad actually registered to vote and how the voting process is going right now. With London having registered more than 25,000 approved people to come and vote in that particular voting stations. People have voted in the United States, in Japan and elsewhere around the world. If you are interested to know what is going on, what is in their mind, those who are staying abroad, this is the video for you. Welcome to King Said So, Africa's one land, one language, one currency, one army on King Said So, Africans can unite your Pan-Africanist podcast. Enjoy. Which country do you think has the largest population of South Africans living outside South Africa? That is the South African diaspora. At number 10 is Mozambique with a population of 20,171. At number 9 is Germany with a population of 20,378. At number 8 is Israel with a population of 22,315. At number 7 is the Netherlands at a population of 41,300. At number 6 is Canada with a population of 51,590. And in the top 5, at number 5 is New Zealand with a population of 71. 1,382. And at number 4 is the United Arab Emirates, the UAE, with a population of around 100,000. And number 3 is the United States with a population of 139,322. And number 2 is Australia with a population of 206,730. And at number 1 is the United Kingdom with a population of around 217,181. Peace in Pan-Africanism to all my African brothers and sisters from all around the world. Welcome back to King Said So. I'm your host, King 053, Mr. Easy Imali Eneng Nengi, and we back at it again with another one. And this time around, we go abroad, ladies and gentlemen. One of my subscribers asked me, King, can you cover the voting procedures and processes of the people that are living abroad? Of course, when you ask on the comment section, your boy King will definitely do it. Now where do I start? How, how do I break this one down? Okay, let's start with the, with the simple numbers first. 2014 national elections, um, registered people of um, people living abroad in South, uh, from South Africa, South African citizens, whether they have dual citizens or whatever they have there. Uh, in 2014, we are looking at 27,000 people that registered and about 26 people, uh, 26 people approved and only 18,000 people voted. This is 2014, okay? And um, in 2019, we saw an increase of the number where it was about 31,000 people that registered and approved to vote. I'm not sure how many uh, came through and voted there, but somewhere there. And then on 2024, it jumped from 31,000 people who applied and approved to vote to 70,000. 70,000 South Africans abroad are interested in particular in these elections. You know, echoing that, um, that saying that 2024 is our 1994. Really, I can see it. Well, there are there are more South Africans who don't care, really. 70,000 is a low number. After you guys have watched the video, I've just shown you guys, there is more people um, who, are, who can register and vote, but they simply don't care. And we know who are those people, right? We know um, when Nelson Mandela was president, a lot of white people left for New Zealand, Germany, and let's say they went back home, to be honest with you. Because they could not stand the fact that a black person is going to be a president. It's the truth, guys. It's the truth. Those who who, who are left were kind of like, mm, ah, man, it's not going to be that bad. Mandela is not that bad. But then Tabombegi came. They left in numbers. Some of them are returning, by the way. Um, they left in numbers. But in the, in the Tabombegi transition to Jacob Zuma era, era, then people started leaving for studying purposes, greener pastures. They are going there to work, but they want to come back home. Unlike the first bunch that left, you understand what I'm saying? And the majority of the people that left are obviously 
white i have to point that out is is not a racist statement is a fact it's factual okay the majority of black people that have left uh are seeking greener pasture in terms of economical uh, benefit or they are going to study and they've been there for some time now now we can see that 2024 has attracted the most the most registered voters excuse me than any other year what are these people interested about for numbers sake if all of them voted for one party let's say all of them voted for king says so they will only give me two seats it might even be one and a half one yeah i don't know what is a half seat because in 2019 70 70 000 voters gave you two seats because about 30 30,000 voters secured you one seat just 30,000 voters secured you one seat in 2019 but that not that might not be necessarily the case in 2024 it might be a little bit more a little bit uh yeah, definitely a little bit more depending uh, depending on how many people actually go and vote it's a race racial thing that we work on there's no guaranteed number of one seat we calculate as to how many people have registered and then we fraction it up you understand what i'm saying so i want to start with the usa i want to start with the usa our our media media channels are not doing a good job um covering this this um voting because i believe it's today the 19th and the 20th or some are voting on the 18th and the 19th uh but they're not doing a good job covering these things you know you need to have correspondent that side that's gonna do the job and all of that but um i want to speak on how it affects us differently as as uh african people and as white people i want to speak uh, how it affects us differently uh, let's first listen to what the people in the United States are saying. Voting is one of the ways to do that. Every party's got their own belief and everybody at home needs to choose which one is the better one for them. I came out today because I think it is my responsibility as a South African that lives abroad um, and having been outside of South Africa for about 25 years now, you know, it is quite important to understand, you know, that every you can't just talk about issues unless you do something about it this is your opportunity to do something about it so um and the issues um obviously we are relatively a young democracy that's how i look at it and um, most of my um international friends are always reminding me that how young our democracy is and yes we have a lot of issues but i think having issues or tackling things like this on days like today is a good step in the right direction because I did come to America, yes, for opportunity and stuff, but my main goal is I'm always going back home. And so in me going back home, I would like to have a voice and a say in what I'm going back and the issues that I'm going back to. So I need to have a country that I believe can go forward and move forward. Um, and having my voice and coming out here to voice, to vote is signifying that. Event for the International Women's Forum, and South Africans had a vote. Any particular issue that's front uh, front of mind for you? Uh, we need new leadership, bottom line. Huh? So hopefully if we all pull together and, and make a, an attempt to vote, we can change our government to a point that we can look forward to better things. It's important for all South Africans near and far to do it. Um, it's your right and uh, Everyone just has to do it. You have to vote. Uh, it's an important election as well. And I think uh, um, I encourage everyone to, to get out, whether that's in two weeks or today or tomorrow, to, to get out and vote. Um, and that uh, makes South Africa as good as it is. Any, any particular issues that are top of mind for you? Um, oh, top of mind. I mean, uh, unemployment, um, crime. Uh, there, there's a lot of things that I worry. Electricity. But, uh, but uh, what Rusty Erasmus are doing with the Springboks, uh, let's look at the positives there. We live in the Dominican Republic and we don't have a South African embassy in the Re Dominican Republic. Our choices were either Jamaica or <laughs> Cuba. So you figured New York would be a better option. Haven't been to the Big Apple in a long time. So good to visit. Any particular issue that's top of mind? Protection in terms of this election that you would need to, that you want to see change? I'd like to see change. Uh, safety, security, electricity, I think. 
the, the usual concerns that everybody has. Yeah, I think we must be, uh, we must bear in mind that uh, some of these people have stayed uh, overseas for years in, and um, you guys will hear when I play the UK uh, videos. Um, some people have lost, I want to say lost touch on how it feels to, to stay in South Africa, you know. Um, but of course, wherever you go, you will always um, remember home. You will always remember um, their home. And um, they want to vote. And you can hear that politically, ah, you can just hear politically, uh, they are afraid to voice out. I mean, someone must just come out and say, hey, listen, I'm happy about what the DA is doing. I'm voting for the DA. Um, let's let's all vote for the DA or let's vote for the ANC. Uh, black people, obviously, Bonabadali. You'll hear when I play the UK side uh, that has registered the, the most vo uh, voters. But uh, for me, they have lost touch. They have lost touch. Um, that South African flavor is no longer there. It's no longer there. And uh, the more they stay that side, the more they bear children that side and raise their children that side, those children will have absolutely no connection to where South Africa is and where home is. They will grow up in the United States and they will think that the United States is their home, which is very important to point out because this is what is happening to our colonizers here in South Africa. They've stayed here so long that they forgot that Europe is actually home. They call themselves African, they call themselves South Africans, but they forgot they are not actually from here. But anyway, that's not the debate for today. Um, don't want to get people's blood uh, boiling, but I'm just pointing out facts here. Um, you can hear when the people speak. And one thing I can tell you about, and you will see when I play the UK uh, videos, white people blend easily overseas than black people. A black skin tone is always associated with Africa. Always associated with Africa. It's difficult for black people to, to, to blend there. I'm not going to get too excited about the numbers of 70,000 people. Those 70,000 people are going to vote for different political parties, as you will see with the UK, because the UK guys, they are more vocal than the US guys. In fact, let me just play... Uh, what the uk people are saying um i got some of the footages from a sister from zimbabwe her name is faith um i think she did a better job than sabc and um the correspondent of sabc i'll play some of his clips also pure nonsense absolutely no flavor no nothing uh, they should have just got a south african to do the interviews even this faith lady from Zimbabwe, did not do a good job, but she did a better job than that uh, white guy from the UK uh, who knew nothing about South Africa. Justice. This morning. Hey, SABC. Hi. SABC. Oh, where, where have you come from this morning? Um, I'm, I've come from Tottenham. Oh, you've come from Tottenham? And yourself? Uh, in uh, London. I live London. London. What? is a day like this to you how momentous is an occasion like this it's uh, it's incredible it's really great um a lot of uh it's not something to be taken lightly i think you know a lot of people fought really really hard to have this opportunity to vote and uh, it's really it's fantastic does it make you proud the atmosphere around yeah. here is, is buzzing this morning it certainly it does really makes us really proud i mean it's just it's a wonderful atmosphere and really really well organized it's been a great great morning so far. <laughs> <laughs> and there's still a long way to go. I know, yeah. but it, yeah. it makes us really proud. And I, you know what? This is this is South Africa. Everybody's after me, all voting, and it's great. It's really a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. By Sandile, who I've been speaking to yeah. this morning. Morning, Sandile. Good morning. Lovely to see you. Um, did you quite expect the turnout here in London's Trafalgar Square? Uh, no, I'm not, actually, I'm very happy. I'm happily surprised by the turnout. It's quite an amazing sight to see. And oh, you, can, you can tell the atmosphere is, it's, everything's just up. Everyone's optimistic. And it's just quite amazing. Talk to me about the logistics as well, because we can see the queue is, is moving rapidly now. How has that been throughout the day? You've been here since the early hours. Yeah, no, so I got here at half past seven in the morning and they were still sort of setting up the barriers. So I believe that will, that it stagnated the queue a bit. But uh, then in the last like half an hour, everything moved like clockwork. 
go in, show your ID, uh, they take your hand and yeah, voting was very, very easy, very, very um, systematic. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and lots of friendly faces as well. I've seen yourself uh, <laughs> mingling with some, some friends that you might not yeah. have seen for the past, but it is yeah. just a good mood here today. It really is. It's quite, it's again, fantastic. It's, it's actually like, it's a party. It really is a party. Um, yeah, no. Fantastic. And the weather hasn't put people off either because no. it's been raining throughout, as I mentioned. Well, yeah, no, it hasn't. I'm just surprised that nobody's brought out a bra yet. But, you know, uh, maybe. I don't know. I'll hang about a bit and see if they do. But, yeah, no, uh, definitely wouldn't uh, dampen anybody's spirits to come out and vote. Hi. Hello. Hello. Where did you travel from today? So I traveled from Romford. It's about 40 minutes away from the embassy. Okay. And... Um, why is this so important to you? Well, um, I think everybody is well known about the ANC and how we've been governed for 30 years. And I think this is the year that we've all realized that we need change. Um, we can't go continue with the same and not get the service that we deserve. So um, it was important for me to come. I have an 11 year old child and um, and I look at her life here in the UK because we've been here 22 years and it is very privileged. Um, but then I look at my cousins and, and they're the same age and I'm thinking they deserve what she's having. Um, so we need to, whilst we're comfortable here, we need to ensure that our people back home are also getting the top quality service. And by doing that is we need to vote so we can ensure we have the right governing party um, in place. Okay. And um, do you have anything to say to the people back home? Well, what I want to say to the people is the 29th of May, May Kenzie, I need you all to get out and vote. It's about time that we need to stand up and we cannot be sitting back and expect people to continue to treat us in the way we've been treated over the last few years. Go out and go vote, Patriotic Alliance. Gaten McKenzie is the man to do the job at the end of the day. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for your time. Hello. 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 Where did you travel from today? I came from Kent, um, the county of Kent, um, Ashford town. Okay. How are you? And why is this so important to you? Well, um, as a South African, um, I think it's very important that we, we actually defend uh, the democracy or the gains of uh, freedom um, that we have acquired back in 1994. Uh, South Africa is quite a stable country and uh, we are enjoying democratic rights. So it's important that one comes here, cast their votes to make sure that things go um, and accordingly. Okay, and do you have anything to say to the people back home? People back home, um, whether someone is supporting the ANC, which I'm a member of, or they don't, uh, everyone must go out in their numbers, uh, vote for the political party of their choice, um, because this is a right that came at a huge cost, you know, of many people who have actually died for us to uh, enjoy this uh, right to vote. So everyone, um, if they go out and vote on the 29th of May for a political party of their choice, that's my message to all the South Africans. Right, thank you so much. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Laran Zuzan Tibane. I traveled from East Croydon, London. And then I came today to vote um, for the national elections for 2024 for South Africans. And I think um, the reason why this is important for us, this generation and the people that come after us, is that it can give change to the, to the upcoming generations. Because the ones that came before us fought for us, they fought for our freedom. And I feel like it's, in, um, it's up to us to actually keep on making that change. So what I'd say for people back at home is that if people in London feel the need to go and vote because their vote is as important, then I don't see a reason why you shouldn't vote. So I'd encourage everyone to just go vote on the 29th. Yes. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Thank you. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. And you? Good, thanks. Where did you travel from today? 
Well, I currently live in London at the moment, but I uh, moved to London about seven years ago from South Africa um, and from Uganda. So I guess I travel from Uganda, South Africa to London. Okay. And um, why is this important to you? Um, this is actually my first time voting and it was really important for me to vote because with everything that's happening in South Africa, that was really important for me to do. Um, with everything that's happening, I just wanted to make my mark in the world and yeah, okay. add to the change. Okay. And do you have anything to say to the people back home? Your vote matters and every vote should, everyone should vote. Don't worry about the queues, make a plan, just vote. Okay. Talking about queues, how long were you in the queue for? You want the real answer or, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, had you asked me this question about a few hours ago, people did were in a queue for about four, four to five hours. Okay. But later in the evening, we literally were in a queue for less than 15 minutes. The process itself is about 10 minutes or less. So it was quick, efficient, and easy. Uh, all right. Thank you so much for your time. What interests me is, um, I, I don't know, um, the accent, the way, <laughs> the way they speak. Now, me, Nane, I am. I come from from Pumalanga. I have been in Northern Cape since 2007. So you can imagine, you can imagine since 2007 been here. And um, when I speak, the Northern Cape people can hear a little bit. Goody, okay, this one is not from Northern Cape. South African, yes, but not from Northern Cape. When a Zulu person goes to even here in South Africa, in Northern Cape, when you hear them speak, even when they try to speak Tswana, even when they speak English, or when they communicate with people in the Northern Cape, you can hear them. And this person is not from here. You, you are from, he's not a local, I understand. In Pretoria, you identify it easy. As someone from Limpopo, you hear them immediately when they speak. A Kosa person from Eastern Cape, you hear them. They can stay in Pretoria for 20 years. You can still hear with Alom Kosa. Why is it that we change our accent in Abantawam Nyang? I just want to say, you know, we've been staying here in the... <laughs> ah, you guys. Ay, man, hey, akele me nyana, man. Akele me nyana, man. I don't know. I think a change of accent is a choice, man. It's a choice. Uh, we saw um, Trevor Noah go to the US for how long? Did Trevor Noah change his accent? No. Be, be proud of where you come from. Be, be, be Nigerian, man. You know Nigerians, they don't change their accent. Wherever they go, they are going to talk at the way they talk. Now that, that is clear with the Nigerians. They don't care. They don't care. For me, that is being proud of where you come from. Why must you blend in by changing the accent? Anyways, happy to see that the African people are there. Voting uh, PA, voting um, uh, the ANC, and whatever they're doing there, I'm happy to see that uh, transpiring there. But like I said, um, we should not read too much into this. Let's see if the IEC, which is a useless website, you go to the IEC trying to check how many people have registered and all of that, you don't get the numbers on the IEC. You don't get the clear numbers. I think they should they should have been a day. Uh, um, uh, hour to hour update or day to day up update on how many people have came through to the voting stations they have voted the vote count is this much i just think that the transparency and efficiency is not the way it's supposed to be you understand tomorrow we want to well you guys are going to get this video on monday the, uh, we want to hear uh, how many people have voted after they close the voting station after 24 hours we want to hear we want to hear you not, you understand what i'm saying so very exciting times uh, 70,000 people approved to vote overseas wow guys that's a big number that's a big number that's a big number uh and um we are happy that our fellow south africans are uh, want to partake and most of them i uh, even forgot to re read their notes from the uk and um in the u.s Mo most of them they say we are young democracy we want new change um everyone must go and vote um and they saying um 
you know those queues in the U in in the UK in London. Wow, man, that's beautiful, man. That's beautiful to see there. But and you, we are born with most of them. Um, you know, yeah, man. What I wanted to point out also that is very that might be interesting to you. You you remember that situation with Lien and uh, Rutendo? When Lien asked Rutendo, why don't you go back home? If you believe in Zimbabwe so much, why don't you go back home? Now, with that being said, how do you think our South African brothers and sisters would feel if they were asked this question overseas? Do you guys see now why we were angry? Especially as Lien being a white person. She had, it was a racist. She had absolutely no right to ask one of our African brothers who is still in Africa, why don't you go back home? It was wrong of Lien to do that. Is her name Lien, whatever her name is. I think she is Lien, Mia, Lien, Mia, Mia or whatever. You know, people move and migrate for different reasons. You cannot at any a, a given point of time ask a person, why don't you go back home? If you think South Africa is so great, why don't you go back home? So I must not be proud of coming back from South Africa, uh, coming from South Africa. Rutendo must not be proud of being a Zimbabwean. Just because he's in a foreign country, once he's becoming proud of being a Zimbabwe, you ask him, why don't he go back home? What type of nonsense is this? Anyway, we are not here to talk about that, but that, that clip, I'm going to play it for a long time, just to remind you uh, just how racist this, uh, some of these white people are. Uh, and I'm using some very carefully, the word some very carefully, because I should use most. You understand what I'm saying? So yes, um, in the uh, let, let's 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 browse through uh, the numbers again. Seventy thousand people registered to vote, approved to vote in 2024 national elections. They are only voting for the national um, for the nation for the party that is going to parliament. They can vote. Uh, you know, we've got three ballots in South Africa this year. They can vote for the regional ballot. They can vote for the provincial ballot. They don't stay here. They only vote for the party that must win the elections and become president. They're voting for the people that are going to parliament. That is uh, very, very important to remember. And like I said, in 2020, in 2014, there were about 26,000 people uh, that registered to vote. Only 18 people came to vote. In 2019, there was 31,000 people registered to vote. I'm not sure how many actually came to vote uh, the number should be somewhere there in the 20 something thousand and now there is 70 thousand registered to vote approved to vote um i expect about 60 60 to 55 to 60 thousand people who are actually going to go because some of them have to travel long distances to come and vote uh, it looks like they did come through but um it's very long distances i hope i've done some type of justice I'll come back to this topic if the IEC, when the IEC gives us um, numbers and uh, the outcome of those votes there and to see, I mean, it is going to get us excited just to see which political party got the most votes overseas. Very interesting. And guys, feel free. Any topic you want your boy King to cover, politically related, black African, um, that impacts us as black Africans, uh, make sure that you put it on the comment section. As long as it's a pan-African related topic, I, 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 will, I will cover it with no problem. Because your boy does not have a TV. I said I was going to buy a TV before the elections. Yeah, for my wife and get DSTV and whatever because it's, it's, it's a few years now without a TV. You know, unplugging ourselves from television, tell a vision. Uh, we plucked ourselves out of that nonsense. And now, uh, because of the elections, I wanted to come back and, you know, get a TV. Um, it entertains children for, for some time. But at least I've drained that uh, mainstream media nonsense that they flush in our brains out of my my family uh, and now i feel like we are at a point where 
the TV can be there, we will not even watch it because we do what we call is selective content, which is YouTube. Uh, we select the content that we want to watch and we don't allow anything else to come and pass and disturb us. Anyway, thank you so much, guys, for tuning in uh, on King Said. So those who want to watch our sister channel, African Mojolo, feel free. Those who want to watch, um, what's the channel I was promoting? Um, African Awakening uh, channel of our brothers. Make sure that you subscribe to that channel too. And um, I will see you guys on the flip side. Until we meet next time, don't forget to pray. After you pray, stand up, African child. Do your best so that God can do the rest. Peace in pan-Africanism. I salute you.